ever get the feeling that everything in America is completely fucked up? You know that feeling that the whole country is like one inch away from saying, that's it, forget it. Okay, so, hey guys. How's everybody doing today? We've got a great story to get into. Story time with Fringe. I feel like I should just have, like, little kitty cats walking around every everywhere and maybe like it would become more YouTube friendly automatically I'm not really sure I'm really really sorry about the uh, video that was taken down last night it was taken down from the main channel and the backup channel it did not last long at all on the main channel uh, YouTube kind of at least they didn't put me in timeout again it was just kind of like community guideline strike warning and I'm like oh Oh, thanks. Thanks for giving me a warning. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> so we can't go live on the main channel. You guys know that. That's why we're here. Uh, and I need to be... I need to be more careful. So I guess we'll be doing the streams kind of a little bit different. I don't know. I don't see what the problem is with like taking what the CDC has told you, um, other scientists, I don't really know what the problem is. Uh, you're just not supposed to say that stuff, right? You're supposed to just keep acting like sheep and, and keep following the rest of the crowd. It's cool. It's cool. It'll be fine. But uh, I would recommend... Like, that's the whole reason that I made the website. I don't do a whole lot over there. I just want you to subscribe there and confirm your email and everything through there so that way I can send you an email. If we get knocked off of fucking everything, I need to be able to send you an email. So it would be really cool for those of you that haven't. If you haven't gone to fringenews.tv, it's like the very first link in the description. Go check it out. All right? Because... <laughs> It's not looking good over here. I I am on my eggshells. I understand, YouTube. I'll try to behave better. Gah. I'll put my sheep mask back on and keep moving. Um, It's not getting thicker. I actually just washed it yesterday. If you guys, like, look at the... Just know if it's really fluffy like this, it probably means that I brushed it out or I washed it. Um... Like, I wash my hair every other day. Sometimes in wintertime, I can, like, go three days. But then I'm like, uh, I should probably wash my hair. So, really, today it's just because I, like, super shampooed it yesterday. That's all. That's all. <laughs> I hope it's getting thicker. That was part of why I got the weird yoga contraption. Is because, like, I'm like, alright, I don't do enough movement. I sit here too much. I need to get everything flowing so everything can, like, stay healthy. Right? <clears throat> I'm drinking, um, if anybody's wondering, it is water. It's just charcoal water, so I know it looks really gross. Uh, you can go and scream Illuminati confirmed to the world if you want, because Fringe is drinking the black goo. It's fine. Uh, it is just carbon, like, activated charcoal water. You guys get mad that I, like, drink sodas and stuff, but I drink some good stuff, too. So I'll just say hey to everybody that's in chat. We've got Snafu, Yeshua Lives, we've got M. Houston, Daniel made it. Let's see, let's see. Sardex's gaming channel. We've got some people in here. It was the talk about straps hanging from your ceiling that upset them, wasn't it? It was, Daniel. They don't want me... The Illuminati doesn't want Fringe to get into yoga because maybe it would make me a more peaceful person. I don't know. I will say that thing can, like, really give you a workout, though. And, like, my partner is always, like, looking in deep concern for whenever I'm going to fall out of the thing. Hasn't happened yet. One day it probably will. Um, and I remember that the first time I used it, I was, like, sore for three days. And I was like, holy cow, this is not a joke. It's not a joke. <laughs> it's serious. Yes, get into the habit don't, like, cram it all on yourself all at once. I'm trying to get back into the habit of being that more 
healthy version of myself. I let myself go just over the year after moving here because it's hard to find like good healthy food and then it makes you not want to do the rest of it. But you have to stay on track with that. and Don't do it all at once. Just add little blocks to your life to make it like a lifestyle. <laughs> all right. All right. So uh, before we do get into the news, I've got a couple of topics that I want to get into before I get into Fringe's story time, the stuff that I really want to cover. I've got a few other things to cover before we get there. Um, before we get to all of that, please check out Wise Wolf Gold and Silver Exchange. Uh, silver is still at a great price. I'm all about silver more than I am gold. If your pockets are just fat and you love gold, then go for it. But Honestly, that upside potential is really in silver. All right. Hello, uh, Tanya Garza. Hello, hello. I don't know if I've seen your name in chat before. And yes, Yeshua lives. Food is medicine. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, I think that we can go on from this. If you guys really need some gold or some silver, you feel the need to kind of protect yourself a little bit. Uh, or you're like me, you're young and you're like, okay, I'm not going to get any retirement from my government. They're printing money like there's no tomorrow. 401ks won't matter. Stocks won't matter for a while. Might get into the stock market later, but I'd like to see a really big crash before I put some money there. So for me, my retirement will probably be in precious metals. Thank you, M. Houston, for putting the link to that in chat. That helps out a whole lot. A whole, whole lot. Okay, okay. So do you guys remember this whole thing? The the Denver shooting that just happened the other day? And I was saying that we need more evidence to see kind of who was in the wrong. I put that video up, I believe, on the main channel, not this channel. But the guy shooting, it was not a good spot. You have the entire left saying, oh, this whole thing is wrong. You have the entire right saying, oh, he's definitely good to go. I don't think so. I think a lot of people were kind of surprised at my opinion on that. Um, I don't have the pictures pulled up, but if you remember Bear Mace guy, he's kind of like the thumbnail of that whole video. Um, he did have a gun in his vest from some photos that I've seen floating around online and some different GIFs, but he never had his hand on the gun. All right, now this is the stuff that I just kind of want to cover really quickly before we get into the stuff that I really want to cover. But I understand that I should probably wait further into the stream before I cover that stuff or, you know, like I said, YouTube's got me walking on eggshells. <laughs> Tanya says, I've been here many times. Just don't chat that much. Love your show. That is awesome. That is awesome. I don't, I don't mind. You guys don't have to chat if you don't want to, but you're always welcome to chat. It, it keeps chat vibrant. You know, you guys can discuss things between yourselves about the show. It's whatever. It's cool. I'm just happy you guys are watching. So check this out. I've got two different videos that we're gonna go over, but I really want you to pay attention to the body language in this video. Uh, the tweet says, Ben Kyle GoPro footage from the scene uh, in the above photos. Why are we only getting selective releases? This is what I was saying, and some of you guys had mentioned that maybe the police had some of the video evidence in their hands. But either way, I figured we would have had more leaked footage. And we never get the whole scene. It feels like we could be picking this story apart for months to come, which I'm not going to do. I think that the guy that shot uh, shouldn't have shot his weapon off. It just shouldn't have happened. So, but he asked, why not the whole video? Ben Kyle says they aren't even paying attention to each other, but to me, the shooter seems to notice the victim. He does. Check this out. I don't think this video actually has any sound, but I'll kind of get to you. So this guy right here... This is our shooter that just walked into frame. This man right here is the bear mace guy, okay? Do I need to blow this up for you guys? Or no? Let me know in chat. We can always rewatch it if we need to. So right over here, he's already made eye contact kind of twice. And if you notice, I'm not saying it was necessarily pre-planned, but for whatever reason, Mr. Shooter guy here and his cap on and his mask and glasses, he's got a very different stance than the rest of the crowd. I always, 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 I'm, I really pay attention to my surroundings, like myself, and whenever somebody is giving off any kind of weird vibe or body language, 
<clears throat> I want to make myself very aware of that person. Just check out the body language. There is no sound in the video, by the way. And there, he looks at him again. Stance is kind of changed up, trying to make himself feel big. These are kind of the signs that I look out for myself in case somebody wants to act like a loon. Looking at him again, like making that direct eye contact. I think he feels it at this point. The guy, the man that was shot. I think he kind of filled it. He's trying to separate himself a little bit. Guy wants to kind of get closer. And there you have it. Body language is everything. It's very interesting how they had already made some eye contact. But I want to take you over to this video. This right here is the guy that ended up getting <clears throat> shot, okay? This man right here, and it seems like they might have had some earlier issues. Now, this video also doesn't have any sound, I believe, because it was caught on a GoPro. Um, yeah, the proximity would make my hackless, heckless rise? I don't know what that word is. I feel dumb. But you'd feel that guy. You, yeah, it's, it's one of those things whenever you're kind of like really, I don't know how to say it, but some people just pick up on the vibe a little bit better than others, right? And if I noticed that, I would kind of want to remove myself from the situation. So this right here is Mr. Patriot Man. That's what we'll call him. He is the victim. They seem to have a bit of a scuffle here for some reason. Kind of just pointing hands at one another. Now, there are police everywhere. There's police further back in this photo. There's cars all lined up here. And over to the left, you'll notice in a moment that there's also police there. But for whatever reason, they're, they're not very happy with one another. Yeah, so that's how that went. <clears throat> I just thought that I would bring this up. Um, a, a big reason that I actually wanted to bring this up tonight is because if you re remember what happened back in Kenosha, uh, this is kind of being brought back to life. So accused Kenosha gunman won't face charges in Illinois, and he should not. If you saw what happened in that scenario, it is two different situations. So I told you guys I was waiting to see what happened with the Denver shooting. Because I don't think that that shooting was justified. Here, Kenosha, this young man, 17-year-old boy, I think that this was justified. His life was very much in danger, right? If I remember correctly, he had somebody come and beat him with a skateboard. Another guy pulled a gun on him and actually pointed it at him, was ready to fire. So this kid, he's, he's good. I think that this was fine and it was justified. But it's funny how they're bringing this back up right as the Denver shooting happened. You know, all of this kind of starts to settle down. Prosecutors say a 17-year-old accused of killing two pro protesters days after Jacob Blake was shot by police in Kenosha, Wisconsin, won't face charges in his home state of Illinois. So obviously I feel like they're going to be bringing this up to kind of rile the people up says, a 17-year-old accused of killing two protesters, da, da 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 won't face charges. An investigation revealed the gun used in the Kenosha shooting was purchased, stored, and used in Wisconsin. The Lake County State's Attorney Office said there is no evidence the gun was ever physically possessed by Kyle Rittenhouse in Illinois. So there you go. People don't really understand gun laws, but it's not that hard to figure out. Rittenhouse of Anna Anacoke? Anacoke. I'm not sure. Remains held in a juvenile detention center in Lake County without bond due to pending criminal charges in Kenosha. Rittenhouse is due back in Lake County Court on October 30th for an extradition hearing. So I really want to see how this goes. Because right now, this is going to set up the stage for how people act in the future. This shooting, completely justified. Bear Mace shooting, not so much. Not so much. I'm sorry, but you can't just shoot somebody because of a macing incident. You just, it doesn't look good in court. But what I want to see is, does Rittenhouse, does he get away clean? 
Or is he the troublemaker in the scenario? That'll be very important to see. Now with the Denver shooting as well, you know, I feel like they could kind of flip-flop these two stories for who's in the right and who's in the wrong, and it's going to piss off a lot of people depending on which direction it goes. I mean, really, either way, some people are going to get pissed off, but it's just something to think about. I want you to know that this is kind of coming back into play. Yeah, it is an instinct, the feeling of danger. He notices him because they were both in on this staged event. Clayface? I think that that's a possibility. The first thing that I actually brought up about the whole thing is it was amazing that we had, like, absolutely no video. We just had four perfect pictures. I am talking crystal clear pictures. That kind of set me off and made me feel a little bit weird. Just a little bit weary of what was actually going on. So... I was actually talking to um, was talking to somebody in Discord earlier, and I wanted to bring this up to you to see if you guys have noticed it, or even if you really even read all that much news online. But the title is, What Happened to Yahoo Comments Section? Why Did Yahoo Remove Comments? If you guys have noticed, there's tons of mainstream media type reporting places where they've taken the comments down. And guess why they did it? Yeah, it's censorship for your safety. So, here's a fractal reason why Yahoo removed comment section on its website. No more details here. Reports reveal that Yahoo has apparently suspended the comment section under its articles. It was a bold move as the website was amongst the few online broadcast hubs where people could freely discuss and express their opinions about reported articles and current affairs. While this move was praised by many, some are disappointed by the actions. I was definitely disappointed. I like to see what the majority of people are actually thinking. Because for every one comment that actually gets left, that's anywhere from like 100 to 100 to 1,000 people feel the exact same way. So what happened? The international news site of Yahoo suspended comments on July 23rd, 2020. Many speculations started running around after Yahoo suspended comments on its site. Some say that the feature was stopped because of people on the site used words that might disregard certain communities, feelings, and more. It's basically just because um, they don't want everyone to kind of feel the same. They need everybody to be on the same page. And what helps you do that? Not letting people have a voice. When you don't let people have a voice, it ruins their narrative. There you go, Sardex's gaming channel. It absolutely ruins their narrative. And it gets other people to kind of think for themselves. They go, whoa, wait. There's like all these people saying something different than this news site is telling me. Should I feel that way? And why should I feel that way? And then they go and look into it. <laughs> More isolation, exactly, exactly. Inclusion. Yeah. But if you guys want to know, yeah, there's a ton of different news articles out there where you can't leave comments anymore, and they all started doing it around the same time. Don't you love that? We all have to... Well, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Um... I don't wear a mask anywhere, but it's funny how they want everybody to wear a mask, not be able to see each other's facial expressions, keep your six foot distance, you know, not be able to feel that body language or touch. Like, it's really, um, it's kind of like CIA tactics and MK Ultra tactics to take away your identity, right? They want to mold you into a new person. And how do you do that? You strip everything else away and silence the rest. Right? That's the reason that all these AIs like to put you in echo chambers. That's the reason why so many people don't care to follow this YouTube channel or they threaten me that they'll stop subscribing because I don't feel the certain way that they feel. If you're happier in your echo chamber, go there. But I'm going to let you know that that doesn't benefit you at the end of the day. To be around everybody that feels the same way that you do, it's not very good for your for your mind and your personality and the future. All right, so now we can get into the stuff that I really, really wanted to get into. Yeah, hug people. 
Well, not like random. I wouldn't just go and hug somebody random. That's not really me, and I'm not a big hugger anyway. But, <laughs> you know, I would say go and do your holidays like normal the best that you can. And if your family doesn't want to do it, try to find some friends around you that want to have a normal holiday season. This stuff is a guy. It's, it's going to get weird, dude. I don't even know, like, what's going on with Halloween or anything. Like, I'm not really sure. Why do you think they use the term social distancing instead of physical distancing? It was not by mistake. I saw this as a YouTube comment and I agree. Yeah, and they've kind of flip-flopped between what they want to say, but the, the main thing that everybody knows is social distancing. Because it's not just physical. And it's not that people themselves are trying to stay off of line and not be social, but uh, they're... You know, when you remove YouTube videos for things that don't al align with how you believe, yeah, that's social distancing. <laughs> yeah, we got that. Okay, so story time with Fringe. I want to read a good bit of this article, okay? The dystopian age of the mask. Story time. Y'all guys ready? So Huxley's Brave New World. 1932 has alphas, betas, and epsilon semi-morons, genetically engineered classes with uniform clothing and uniform opinions. Wow. It's starting to sound like 2020. Orwell's 1984 has the thought police and newspeak. Wow. Sounds like 2020. While Zamyatin, while Zamyatin's we, 1921, has numbers instead of people, kind of like the social security numbers we were given at birth, vowels for females and consonants for males. If there is a single defining characteristic of dystopian literature, it is the eradication of all individuality. What are we stepping into right now? Self-consciousness is just a disease for these for this reason. Dystopias are invariable, invariably told by tormented outsiders, those who are well aware of the commodity-like standardization of their fellow humans, yet either fear the consequences of speaking out or resist their own sense of self. Does that not feel like 2020 right there? Fear the consequences of speaking out or resent their own sense of self. That's exactly where we are. After all, no offense is so heinous or unorthodoxy of behavior as Huxley writes. Given their tyrannical preoccupation with uniform, uniformity, uniformity, there we go. It is little wonder that as literary from dystopias emerged at the beginning of the 20th century, the totalitarian regimes of Russia and Germany, as well as their te technocratic Western counterparts. Yeah, I'm, I'm dealing with some technocratic issues right now. Inspired by the likes of F.W. Taylor and Henry Ford were central sources of inspiration. Yeah. For all their apparent differences, these competing ideologies are united by the utopian attempt to redraw not just society, but the human being himself or herself. The increasing power of science and technology gave rise to the idea that nature itself, in all its messy complexity, could be finally put straight. Oh, are you guys enjoying story time with Fringe? This is good. If you guys want to share this with anybody else, let me actually uh, go ahead and put this into chat. Save this for yourself and um, send it out. Send it out to loved ones and friends because it's pretty good. Uh, let's see, where am I here? Besides these three conincial authors, however, this generation produced another equally impressive, if much less well-known dystopian writer. The enigmatic German Inners Younger? I can't say German words. Ernest Junger. Junger? I'll stop trying. Known primarily for his First World War diaries and steadfast opposition to William liberalism. Uh, Ernest went on to live until the age of 103, writing on topics from etom etomology. etomology. 
and psychedelics to nihilism and photography. In the second half of his career, he produced three principal works of dystopian fiction, Helopius, Amusewell, and perhaps his finest, The Glass Bees. Go and pick those up. Here, let me put this in chat too and see if you can find a good, a good version for yourself. Arguably his most chilling vision, however, is offered in an extended essay published on the eve of the Nazi ascension to power in 1932. The worker, as Ernest calls it, aims to sketch what he regards as the coming new world order, an order defined by fundamentally new type of humans. Having dispended with the liberal values of the past and embraced his fate in the factories on the battlefields of the early 20th century. The hallmark of the new man is uncanny resemblance, both in body and soul, to the machine. Ooh. Yeah, it's good. Born to human parents, Ernest Worker is nevertheless a child of the industrial age. This is fun. What? Music? Okay, hold on. Somebody said music was really good back then. Now it's just blah. I can find you so many shitty pieces of music from back in the day, and I can find you so many for today. Throughout time, there has always been great music. People just don't like what they're not used to, you know? Like, I probably shouldn't, but I really love a lot of today's music. <laughs> not, um... Like, country's gone down, gone down the drain. Country music sucks. Like, back in the day, maybe it was okay, but it was pretty freaking depressing either way. And I don't, I don't know, you know. Like, there's lots of good and bad things back then and even now. Let me continue with Fringe's story time. Following the dystopias of his contemporaries, the prime casualty of this new age is also the individual, for the logic of the machine permits no difference. Whether the natural world or the human mind, Ernest argues that everything is increasingly defined by a certain emptiness and uniformity. Oh, wow. That's 2020. The result, to use Orwell's words, is a nation of warriors and fanatics marching forward in perfect unity, all thinking the same thoughts and shouting the same slogans. Millions of people, he adds, all with the same face. This is so good. It is in the last respect that the worker takes on a dis disturbing relevance for our own times, for the uniformity of the new age of symbolized, Ernest suggests, by the sudden prolification of the mask in contemporary society. It is no coincidence, he writes, that the mask is again beginning to play a decisive role in public life. It is appearing in many different ways, be it a gas mask with which they are trying to equip entire populations, be it as a face mask for sport and high speed seen on every racing driver, be it a safety mask for workplaces exposed to radiation, explosions, or narcotic substances, we can assume he continues with an eerie prescience that the mask will come to take on functions that we can today hardly imagine. It's amazing, isn't it? Given the sudden you ubiquinity ubiquity maybe of the face mask in 2020 across the entire globe and in an increasing number of social contexts it is impossible to avoid the conclusion that this is precisely the sort of development Ernest had in mind our readiness to obscure the face reflects the dehumanizing tendencies that for Ernest underlay the modern period it represents another stage in the dead degradation, sorry, of the individual that became explicit in the First World War, whether as a scrap of material on the battlefield or a cog in the machine of the wartime economy. The modern age has a habit of reducing the human being to a functional object. That's exactly how the elite see us, as a functional object. Everything non-essential, everything that is that makes us human is blatantly discarded. Blatantly, sorry. The question for us is what it means to resemble such a dystopian vision. Are we happy to rationalize the transformations of our everyday lives, or are we concerned by the proximity of today's world with some of the most basic dystopian tropes? Whether the call for social isolation 
perpetual vigilance, or mandatory face masks. The measures of the last six months represent more than an assault on liberty. The, the, implic the implicity enjoin us to sacrifice our humanity in order to save our lives. Even if this Rubicon has not yet been crossed, it is worth thinking about the point at which it is. For her perhaps there is more to life than its mere continuation. Perhaps the object, as Winston Smith well knew, is not to stay alive, but to stay human. Was that not fantastic? That's like the best. Here, let's uh let me link this again so you guys can like share it with some folks. I want you to be able to share this because it's it's just written so well. I like I really like it. Hey, stop it. Putting that in chat once again because it's really, really good. All right. Did I lose a bunch of people? Did you guys not like the story time? So um, now we're going to jump into something else. I know that YouTube is not a big fan of the facts, but let's look at something, right? I'm pretty sure that everybody here, even if you're not good at basic math, don't worry, you don't have to be. We're not going to do any super math here. But check this out. This is on uh, lourockwell.com. All right, lourockwell.com. Let me give you the link for this as well. Share this, share this, share this. This link that I'm putting in chat right now, share the hell out of it. So presented without comment. We don't even have to read anything. Now, this, this is from uh, Bill Sardi, October 13th, 2020. Today, this was released. So check this out. Total U.S. deaths all causes. We have our year right here, right? The year. You have total deaths in the U.S. So now you have them from the year and then from month to month. All right. And check this out. All of it references the CDC data. This is all CDC data. So check this out. If we go back to 2017, 2,813,503 people died in total in 2017, average for 12 months. 2018, 2,839,205 deaths for 2018. All right, let's go to 2019. 2,855,000 ,000 deaths. All right. Well, we're in this major epidemic right now, right? Like we're in a pandemic right now. 2020 total deaths in the U.S. All causes 2,838,000. Yeah, it looks like we're going to average out about normal. Look, they're all around 2.8. If we go from month to month, it's uh, 23, around 234,000. We'll go with, what's the best average? 237,000. So they've told us that 207,000 people have died from this event that's going on, right? From the event that's going on right now, the reason that we all have to wear face masks, but... If we go to the CDC's data charts and look at the numbers, again, share the hell out of this. It's on LeeRockwell.com. LeeRockwell.com. Share the hell out of it. Share it to your family. Share it to your friends. Share it online. Make up a fucking sock account and get the info out. These are the numbers staring you in the face. Can you tell me what's wrong here? Can anybody in chat actually tell me what the problem with this is? Because it doesn't, it doesn't take a super mathematician to see what's going on here. Doesn't take that. They put it in plain sight. It's right in front of your face. It's in plain sight. Nobody wants to see it. Here's another good one. It's from lourockwell.com. I can't say the title or else YouTube will get rid of the video. So I can't do that, but I'll read a little bit of it. So 
Readers have sent me electron microscope images of what are claimed to be isolated versions of the issue that we're dealing with now. I am so sorry. I hate stooping to the level of talking in some sort of code, but I think that you guys understand what's going on. An image here, an image there. This is not the way science is done, as I will explain fully in this article. I have also been sent a CDC document that claims the very thing that we're dealing with right now has been isolated. However, that document is dated two months earlier than the CDC document that admits they do not have an isolated version of the problem that we are dealing with. Do you understand what I am saying? So it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Let me, um, before I go any further, let me share this as well. Share the hell out of this video, please, please, please. Just help me out here. I kind of, I kind of feel a little bit concerned if you can't tell, but share the hell out of everything that I am giving you in chat right now. Wake somebody up tonight, today, tomorrow, next week. Wake them up. Oh, here we go. Last week, I wrote and published two articles, not me, but Lee Rockwell, Lou Rockwell, exposing the root of the poisonous tree. The CDC admits it does not have an isolated version of what we are dealing with. That thing that everybody's talking about in the news, they haven't isolated and identified it. Therefore, that problem that we're dealing during this pandemic has never been proved to exist. Hello? The shattering fact reveals the whole scamdemic is not what it seems. The virus, the test, the case numbers, they're not what they seem. And the lockdowns were unnecessary and criminal. I, I can't even just go and look at the links that I have given you tonight. Okay? Because I cannot share any more of that article. <coughs> YouTube has made that incredibly clear. Do you guys understand what I'm telling you? Please save those links. Please, please, please save the links. We are... I don't even know how to say this. Like, YouTube made things pretty clear last night. <laughs> they made it pretty clear, but we are dealing with massive fraud on a global scale. Well, Tanya, see, that's part of the problem. Is him even doing that? Trump even doing what he did? All of us knowing that he did not have it? He did not have it. That's what you need to get in your head. The numbers that I just showed you, the studies that I'm sending to you guys in chat, Trump made the whole thing up with a team of people. Okay, why did he do that? Because it makes it more real. It makes it more real. Yeah, see, Daniel, they had published it, they had published that two months before. But then two months later, the CDC is like, we lied. We didn't have that. So, yeah, that's what we're dealing with. I hope you guys enjoyed Fringe's story time. I think that that's all I have for you guys. <laughs> Celebrity disease. That's a good one, Justin Lee. That's perfect. I think that I might start using that if it's okay. I'm going to coin your little phrase. I'm going to coin your term and... It might just turn into celebrity disease from now on. All right? Um, but yeah. Like, we need to open our eyes, not just to the fact of like, oh, it's not as bad as they say, but go even further than that. I can't say that on YouTube. I, I realized that after last night, but you've got to go even further than that. Like, the numbers that I just gave you proves everything. Again. 
<clears throat> if you need to scroll back up into chat and get those links. All right. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I had a good time. Fringe's story time was perfect. Maybe next time I can get some like cute kitten gifts going all over the place and it'll, it'll be 10 times more YouTube friendly, right? They'll just love it. <laughs> Oh, Sardex's gaming channel calls it the race to the bottom. That's where we're going. Yay. That's where we're going. All right, guys. I will see you later tonight. Um, That stream that I had planned with Davy Croco, or I'll see you tomorrow, not later tonight, unless an emergency happens. But the stream that I had planned with Croco, it's still planned. He just got really, really busy. There's a lot on his schedule. So that's not happening. But if you want to, tune into the Midnight Crockpot. Search that on YouTube and tune in over there. It's going to be a really good show. Croco and um, Wild Smile do it together. It's pretty good. So the Midnight Crockpot, go check that out. I'll probably be in their chat later. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.